This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, February the 26th, 2019. Today is the feast day of St. Alexander of Alexandria, a bishop of the 4th century in Alexandria, Egypt. He was the man who formally excommunicated the priest Arius, for whom the Arian heresy is named, and the man who named Athanasius to be the bishop as his successor. Arius taught that Jesus was created by God the Father and therefore was not of the same substance as God the Father and was not co-eternal with God the Father. And that means that Jesus is not fully God and thus he is not sufficient for our salvation. And so prayer to Jesus or to the Holy Spirit would be ridiculous as would imitating his life, worshiping him, or even following his commandments. Arian Christianity tends to become non-Christianity really fast. And even so, the heresy took four centuries to wipe out completely. It made a bit of a return in the modern era with the Jehovah's Witnesses and with what has been called cafeteria Catholicism. Those politicians today who claim that abortion or the homosexual agenda can be legitimately Catholic are basically espousing the Arian heresy of the 4th century. St. Alexander's excommunication was appealed by the heretic Arius to the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. That council upheld the decision, and they wrote the Nicaean Creed in response to Arianism. Today in 1802, in Dubs, France, near the German border, Victor Hugo was born. He grew up just as Napoleon and the Bourbons were going back and forth, and Victor's father was a high-ranking officer under Napoleon, and so the family was always on the move. Although he was raised by a holy and loving mother, the close ties between the church and the monarchy caused him to abandon his faith and to embrace the liberal philosophy of the day. He was a prolific poet, but he's best remembered for his long and meditative novel, Les Miserables. And even then, most people know that work because of the musical adaptation for stage and screen. Victor Hugo spent much of his adult life in exile on the island of Guernsey, but he was able to return to Paris in the years before his death. Hugo never got back to church and instead embraced the burgeoning French secular humanism of the day. He specifically wrote in his will, that he was not to be buried with a crucifix or by a priest. And today is the birthday of Antoine Fats Domino. He was born in 1928 in New Orleans where he lived his whole life. He started his career in the Hideaway Club at the age of 14 where he earned three dollars a day to play jazz piano. He was hired by Billy Diamond who recognized the young man's talents and he called him Fats because of his improvisational style, which was similar to Fats Waller and Fats Pichon, both popular jazz musicians at the time. Also, the boy could eat. His only number one was Blueberry Hill, a catalog song of the day that was owned by Imperial Records. I'm Walkin' and Whole Lot of Lovin' also charted very well. Truth be told, though, New Orleans jazz isn't about playing a song with verses and lyrics. It's about the improv, the room, the vibe, and that's where Fats Domino made his mark. He died in 2017, just shy of his 90th birthday, and he continues to influence New Orleans jazz men today. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.